Uh, welcome to this uh, Future of Work uh, Roundtable. I'm Steve Lewis, uh, VP of CNBC Strategic Content and Councils. For the next 30 minutes, we're going to have a spirited dialogue about remote work and the next stage of globalization. But that's not all we're going to talk about. Think of this as a dinner table conversation in pre-COVID pre times. So we're going to follow your lead. Uh, you're the experts, after all. Uh, so first, some quick ground some quick ground. Rules. This is an off the record, on the record, on the record, and on the record, on the record, conversation, conversation, and it's being and recorded. It's being recorded. Please keep yourself keep on mute yourself when, on you're not speaking. when you're not speaking. If there's an audio, there's echo, an audio echo, like the one I'm hearing right now, that's uh, that's really rough. Try switching to headphones. Um, that usually solves it in this uh, program. But being on mute is usually the uh, uh, the solve. Um, this round table is designed to be interactive, so please stay on camera and participate. If you have a question and we haven't called on you, please say so in the chat and we'll acknowledge. Uh, a troubleshooting tip, leaving, refreshing your browser and coming back fixes most other technical issues. Uh, finally, one of the great features of our council's programs is that we have truly world-class sponsors and those sponsors recognize the incredible talent we convene. So they really step up and bring their top talent to engage with you. So with that, I'm going to invite Sarah Franklin, EVP and GM for Platform, Trailhead, and App Exchange at Salesforce to say a few words before we kick off the conversation. Sarah? Thank you, Steve. Hello, everybody. Great to see you here today. Um, I'm excited for this conversation. And if I rewind back, you know, about seven months when Almost overnight, we moved our sales to Zoom rooms and we moved our call centers to kitchens and we became immersed in this all digital work anywhere world. And we're all here wondering what the future is, um, but the future is, is now in this all digital world. And at Salesforce, we are dedicated to helping, to, to helping with our products and our people and our technology. Um, we launched work.com several months back to help everybody reopen safely. And we're continuing beyond crisis, beyond safety into the employee experience, which is something that is so important as everybody is looking to not just reopen, but also how we get back to growth. And so Salesforce is here today with all of you because we want to help and we want to build the future together. And this is something that's not simply the responsibility of you know, silos and departments. It's something we all have to bring all of our things together to do. And so um, myself and all of Salesforce, we're very excited to be here with you today. Thanks, Sarah. Really appreciate your support. And um, we look forward to you being a part of the conversation the rest of the way. Now I'm going to hand it over to Seema Modi, uh, our global markets reporter, who's going to conduct the rest of the conversation. Thank you, Steve. And good afternoon, everyone. I'm Seema Modi. So excited to kick off this discussion and again, have this dinner uh, table uh, conversation about the idea that we've been working from home for seven months, a lot of us have, and now trying to come to this realization that in some cases, this may be permanent for some teams. So if that's the case, how do we win? How do we be successful in this environment? And I'd love to just sort of first start, there's some notes that some of you had sent in on some of the areas you'd like to learn more about, or at least have the opportunity to discuss. And the first area that seems to be getting a lot of attention is how do, how do we communicate effectively in this environment, specifically uh, with our teammates, our peers, our bosses? How do you instill positive culture? Um, how do you maintain those relationships if you don't have that water, cool, water cooler opportunity where you can bump into someone, ask them how their kids are doing? And so, Michael uh, DeFontaine, I'd love to sort of call on you, if, if, if that's okay, to sort of help us understand how you've been doing things yeah, um, at probably Indigo. probably followed similar solutions as a lot of other companies have, which is to be much more explicit in uh, enabling that type of communication. And so teams that may not have had regular check-ins or daily stand-ups have them now. Uh, we are a little bit more um, focused on uh, virtual um, sessions that don't necessarily have a defined work agenda. Uh, so it can be a weekly happy hour. Um, so all of these things have helped, <clears throat> but have definitely not cracked the nut. I think, um, like everybody else, what we find is that 
it's uh, so difficult to have that uh, informal, quick conversation. And also by just not encountering individuals in the hallway, just the sphere of folks that you interact with is less. Um, and you know, we don't necessarily have the, any stats or facts behind it, but you know, there's, there's a feeling that we're missing out on opportunities that that informal uh, conversation can have. And so I would love to hear from others if, if they found uh, ways to, to help address that. Is there someone who would like to share uh, a strategy they've used that they found to be successful thus far? So giving, giving people time away from all of that is also part of the solution, I think. I mean, we, we shut the company down effectively for one whole day just so people didn't have to do any email, any Zoom calls, any of this, because I think the I think the problem is all the solutions are kind of actually being delivered through the same technology. So the things we're trying to do to improve the, the social interaction are actually using the same tools that we're using to do the work. And I think that's one of the greatest differences between work from work and work from home. So we need to kind of create ways of, of creating different modes of operation which the only one we found so far that people really liked was taking a whole day off. So people around the world um, were off together because otherwise you find that one country has a public holiday, but everyone else is working and there's never actually a whole day when everyone around the world can take a day off. So we found that was really successful. Um, but like you, we're, we're struggling to find other mechanisms, um, but, but trying to break the modes of interaction, I think is part of the key to how we, how we get the productivity curve back up because the productivity curve is clearly declining as we get six, seven months into this uh, into this activity. Absolutely. And maybe on that note, uh, Bobby Goshel, I know you're at ResMed, uh, your thoughts on how to, how to, you know, increase communication and be an effective leader if, if part of your team is actually overseas and running on a different time zone. Yeah, we are a geographically dispersed team and you know, facing the same challenges that most of you are, are facing here. Uh, so I agree with Andrew about, you know, get, getting a, a day off that is synchronous across the company because it doesn't help to have half the team on and half the team off. Uh, a, a few other things is we are, um, we're doing regular check-ins in terms of surveys. So we take the, uh, you know, we call it pulse surveys uh, and, and very regular surveys. What we're noticing from the surveys is in as much as we try, and we've got these different levels of uh, having these no agenda check-ins. For example, I do a Q&A every other week with every region. So I have a big Americas team, a big APAC team, and, and Europe team, which admittedly the cultural differences are very stark across these as you join the, the different calls. And we've been doing this in a, a regular cadence every other week for the last seven months. And I can tell you, in, in, and even with all of that, uh, we find that our, we, we track well-being across our team and we find that you know, resiliency in terms of how the team is feeling is actually on a downward trend. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's been on that trend for the last seven months for, I think for all the reasons we know, right? It, it, the fact is the business hasn't stopped. Uh, and you know, families with small children, they are struggling to, to balance you know, how to take care of all that and keep work going because again, this is such an engaged employee base uh, that we have great team. They wanna do all the right things. So where it's coming at an expense of personal well-being. We, we see that very clearly. So what we've, I think the best we could do is acknowledge that. And, and we, we do that very clearly. We share all the results very transparently, open it up to our, to our team members to say, look, we, we, are, we are hear you. We see that we have comments in our surveys that we, we share with folks. Um, so to the extent that we can mitigate some of these, uh, uh, we're trying. We haven't found a panacea yet. There's, there's a few things we are trying and because it, we, I think we just have to keep trying. And thank you for bringing that up because I think the impact on emotional and mental health is something that needs more recognition perhaps in, in the corporate workplace or this virtual workplace that we're now living in. Any tips or tools um, 
others here ha have found to be beneficial to, to tackle that subject. Yeah, this is Harry. Can you, hear, you guys hear me? I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> yeah, so uh, the isolation, I think, is uh, rather profound and it's beginning to weigh on people in significant ways. You know, the expectation was that by the fall, this was going to be, you know, we'd have something, we would have been past this, life would be coming back to normal. I think the stark reality is that this is going to go on for years. People are now referring to this as the pandemic era, which means that it's going to go on for quite some time longer. Um, I think the isolation from a work perspective for many of us uh, is kind of like we found ways to deal with it. I think the isolation from the personal side is rather profound. Uh, not being able to hug someone, not being able to shake hands with anybody. Um, you know, my daughter comes to visit from Baltimore every couple of months and I can't give her a hug. I mean, that's like weird. It's kind of like, you know, it's, um, and I think that's starting to weigh on people. Um, uh, don't have any good answers, to be honest with you. I think that it's, uh, it's just going to be a struggle. Um, I don't think uh, technology innovation and whilst, you know, video is great, uh, you know, it's great to be able to see people, acknowledge people, um, you know, uh, doing cocktail hours uh, on video is not quite the same as going to a bar. So uh, uh, if anybody has any great suggestions, I'd love to hear it. We do lots of different things. We do bi-weekly all hands meetings. Everybody gets to ask everybody questions. Gets to ask questions. We do yoga classes. We do you know, a lot of social events, uh, magic hours with kids and what have you. And coming up to Halloween, we're doing lots of things with families and what have you. Um, but I think I think it's big, it's this uh, this mental anguish is really hard. And I wish I could say here's three things you could do. One of the interesting things we've found, we found, found and not sure about it, not sure about it. Well, well. Building on your point, Harry, we, we've seen a lot of mental anguish, a lot of fatigue, a lot of stress. At the same time, our employees are taking a lot less vacation than they have in the past. Uh, so that's one thing that we've been trying to uh, try and push is we realize you, you maybe not be in a situation that you can travel on your holidays like you have in the past, uh, but take some time off, take a week, take yeah. a couple of days. Uh, I go, it's like, yeah, sorry, Michelle. It's like, yes, absolutely. Vacation is like really important. You know, take people believe, you know, sort of, I, mean, I remember when I took my first few days off when I was working from home. And it was like, it was really weird to say, I'm going to take a vacation. Where am I going? Nowhere. Oh, I'm just gonna... yeah. <laughs> so I might as well work. But it's like, you know, but I think that, that helps with the mental state. The other thing is that, you know, sort of um, many companies, you know, are starting to reopen their offices like two to three days a week so that people can come back into the office. And leadership are turning around and saying to their employees, you know, we don't, you know, if you want to come back to the office two or three days a week, you know, sort of, uh, you have a fill out a form, you have an app, what have you. Meanwhile, the leadership is there five days a week because, and that's that's a huge mistake. It's kind of like leadership need to walk the talk. They need to do what they're telling their employees to do. Otherwise, employees are going to, you know, so in this particular situation, the employees felt because leadership was all in the office, they had to be in the office too. And they felt that there was an inequality and that they, were being looked down on because they weren't in the office. So then when leadership realized this, they switched it. And um, so you got to walk the talk. And, um, you know, I think that leadership, oh, I don't know what's happened. Uh, uh, leadership has changed a lot in the last several months. It's like, you're no longer managing people, you're managing work. Um, you know, it's like, I don't really care if, you know, sort of if, if people want to get up at 5 a.m. in the morning, work till noon and go play golf in the afternoon. As long as their objectives are met and the deadlines are met, and uh, you know, then it doesn't really matter when you work. So right, making sure they're, sure they're they're productive, they're productive. But still making sure they have time for their um, yeah. uh, personal yeah. needs. I think Mark Staples, you, you wanted to get into the conversation as well. Well, I think Harry's spot on on the issue of the uh, the discussions I've had with my staff, and my and my leadership team is really around the uh, what has been. So the struggle, it sounds like oftentimes it's a remote work struggle when in fact, it's just a social interaction struggle uh, in general. If if our folks were able to go to the movies 
go go to dinner, be able to hug their daughter, you know, Harry, to your point, and do the normal things on the social side of this, then the work remote, the the remote work issues become less uh, less of a uh, of a of a stressor, uh, and in fact would probably end up becoming much more productive. And the the hard part is is that there's really and Harry said this earlier there's really no solution to solve that problem, um, you know. So you know what can we do? Uh, and I, I I my concern is really around the relationships that you're trying to establish. Uh, at my institution, we are uh, we're a university. Uh, I have a, a president who's been here just a year. I have a new CF, I, so I'm the CIO. Um, I have a new CFO started in June. I've never been in the same room with him. I got a new, uh, so no C, no C, new CFO, a new provost. I've never been in the room with her, except for during the interview process, which was pre-COVID. Um, and I've got a new uh, a VP of enrollment management and marketing. I've never been in the same room with him. How do you develop the trust relationships that are key to rolling up your sleeves and solving problems that you know that you really need to get in the same room and understand those nonverbals that you don't get with a mask on and you don't get through a, through a digital Zoom session. And so those are the I think some of the challenges that uh, folks have talked about uh, impact on culture. I don't think it's impacting culture. It's impact because cu- your values aren't changing. Are, are the things that the way we're doing things is changing only because of, of just the remote, but it is impacting those relationships and those trusted relationships. And how do we address those issues? And Gurvinder, I've been seeing you nod your head. Is there any comments you wanted to share here on, on team collaboration in this environment? And also just from a technology perspective, how do we, how should we prepare for this sort of second inning that we're now seeing? You know, I think the, the, all these points are spot on and, you know, being a leader and in the software industry, I, I deal with these problems on a day-to-day basis. Um, first of all, you know, we, we as a leader, we have to make sure we create transparency. Uh, for an example, like you know, until last month, we didn't tell our employees that you know our offices will be closed until let's say June next year, and that was creating a lot of anxiety anxiety within the organization. But as soon as we created that transparency, at least now people know what's been expected from that for for next 10 months or so. Um, I think this way they can they can plan their their life, they can plan their kids life, schooling and all those things. So I would say ensure we we have a good transparency across the organization. We are giving ample information to our employees. Um, Second, I would say, you know, being show empathy, right? That's um, and a lot of time, you know, um employees my employees are feeling anxious because they're concerned that if they're in a zoom meeting and their kids are crying how how their supervisor or their bosses will feel about it so if you can just tell, let them know that hey it is okay we are all basically going through the same situation even i have two kids and they they have school to attend and you know, I'm going to take a break in between the meetings and go help them with, your, with the schoolwork. So if we can create that kind of environment, you know, it's definitely going to help um, creating that empathetic culture across the organization. Yeah, I do. I, 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 Gurvinder, you're, abs- you're absolutely right. It's like on a regular basis, I'll grab my dog and he'll be sitting on my lap because I want to show people. It's like there's nothing wrong with the dog sitting on my lap. You know, I was on a board meeting um, uh, uh, earlier this year and the CEO was in the middle of making his board presentation. His wife walks into his office and said, "Sweetheart, I need you to, you know, I need you to hold the baby." And he goes, "I'm in the middle of a board meeting." She goes, "That's an answer to a different question." Here and now, he's holding the baby, and he continues with the board presentation. Not a single board member said anything. Last point is there was an article. I think it was in the New York Times, it was either the New York Times or the Journal, one of the two, and it, the headline was, um, Social Distancing, You Must Be Joking. I never thought I'd know so much about the people I work with. I've been in their homes, I've been in their kitchens, their living rooms, their dining rooms, I've been in some bedrooms, I've even been in a bathroom. I've met their parents, I've met their kids, I've met their grandkids, I've met their grandparents, I've met their dogs, their cats, I've even met snakes. I mean, you know, how many times have we been on a Zoom call and like this tail just, you know, from the cat walks across in front of the camera? It's like, 
There's nothing wrong with all that. That actually means that you're human. If the baby cries or the FedEx truck guy rings the doorbell, it's like, these things are okay. It doesn't mean that you're you know, not a quality person or you're unprofessional. This is real life. I kind of yeah. love that, by the way, instead of having to be in the water cooler to, to sort of share personal experience, maybe just welcoming it in your household because that's the way you build that empathy then too with your team. I'm sitting here eating a, a mandarin. Why not? <laughs> I I, think I'm happy, happy, happy to send you all mandarins if you like. <laughs> I the think the challenge though is in the morning here, and it's six p.m. in the UK, and the UK guys start having glasses of wine on the call, and it's ten o'clock in the morning in California. It kind of feels that that I think is a step too far, right? The uh, um, so we need to um, we need to either uh, kind of globalize drinking times, or we uh, or we need to ban that because otherwise it feels I feel a bit left out. Kenneth, Kenneth. Yeah, I was just I was just going to add. I think you know we see it at, at one level, and I was having a conversation with some junior members of the team, and you know they their uncertainty of what is going on and and what does it mean because you see so much transformation, uh, and, and you know that that's a new thing that we're faced with right now as some of my executive team to understand how do you have that conversation and how do you. Um, help in this time of uncertainty because a lot of it is out of our, our control. But it's not just uncertainty, you know, on, on their job, but, you know, what will that future um, normal look like, you know, as we all start coming back to the office or not coming back to the office and who needs to be in the office and why do you need to be in the office and those types of things. So, you know, there's uncertainty for today and, you know, the politics and COVID and, you know, whatever, you know, other challenges are facing us as a nation and humanity, but it's also at the next level, um, you know, what does that future mean with all the transformations and all the activities? So, uh, it's, it's multifaceted and multi-layered. Is there a last word, out there? Yeah, I Hey, hey, Jonathan, would you mind uh, muting? Just we're getting some echo. I, I think the only thing I'd say, given the office and the mask here, we struggle with all of these same discussions and we have taken a somewhat different approach. So this might be a little bit of a contrarian view. About two months ago, we did bring the company leadership back on site and any of our folks working critical projects because we struggled significantly with this. We were seeing the productivity curve coming down and we made a decision as a company, We We've been operating our manufacturing facilities throughout this process. And so we made a decision to bring those workplace practices, those safe practices to our offices as well, and bring probably I'll say about 30 to 40% of our office folks back on site. And we're now looking, once the metrics start to look a bit better, can we start to bring people back on site one week a month? You know, so not really densifying our sites again, but some level of on-site interaction to drive sort of those face-to-face -face communications but that's why i was curious to join this to see if, if others have cracked this equation but this is kind of the path we took because we felt we were really losing too much being 100 percent remote as an organization how many are, are back at work at least some some with some employees hands anyone or mostly so about no, about a third of us are, are back at work. Interesting. Most of us still working from home. Yeah, it's, a couple, couple it's, not, it's not consistent around the world. So if you're in Taiwan or China, high density back in the office, Korea, Japan, kind of mixed, Europe kind of actually reversing course, leave, leaving the office, uh, and, and the U.S. has never really kind of got back to the office, certainly for us as a company. So it's, it's not one answer. It's very different around the world. And that's, again, probably the way it'll be for some time to come. Yeah, so uh, just a couple of other comments from my side. From my side. Uh, that echo is back. What do I do about the echo? Hello? Okay, it's come. Um, so a couple of other points from my side. One is you know, sort of the, the myth of being not being able to work from home productively. I think that's gone. I mean, not for everybody, but for millions of people, they found that they can actually work productively from home. Clearly prefer to have their kids back in school would make life much easier. Um, uh, but the work-life balance is actually, you know, sort of for many people better. Uh, and then, you know, sort of from an employer perspective, you know, sort of, and you just said it, you know, sort of bring, bring everybody back like one week a month. 
So you're not going to have everybody back in the office at one time. You can't do that. You don't have the physical space. But the other thing, you know, sort of the great advantage from an employer perspective is you can be geographic. You can be geographically agnostic. Um, and uh, so you cannot literally hire from anywhere in the world. Uh, on that note, I really got a pop. That was someone calling me. I'm yeah, late for I a 3.30 meeting. Thank but uh, you. lovely seeing everybody. Stay well. Thank you. This was a great discussion. Steve, I'll send it back to you. I did it again. Fantastic discussion. Am I off now? Here we go. Yep. Fantastic discussion, everybody. Um, really, uh, thanks so much, Seema, um, and to all of you for contributing. It really uh, makes such a difference to hear all your perspectives. And I hope you all will stay in touch and uh, network. Um, and uh, I thank uh, also Salesforce um, and Sarah Franklin uh, in particular.